welcome to EPG Partshala. This uh, module is the continuation of the biodiversity and environmental conservation module and it will discuss the current status of biodiversity in India. Starting with the introduction part, biodiversity refers the variation or variability among living organisms and they constitute terrestrial, marine, aquatic ecosystems and the ecological complexes. I have already told the definition of biodiversity in the previous modules. Biodiversity, it reflects the number, variety, variability of living organisms and includes diversity within species that is known as genetic diversity. Diversity between species that is known as species diversity and diversity between ecosystems is known as ecosystem diversity. Now, biodiversity constitutes the most important working component of a natural ecosystem. It helps to maintain the ecological processes. The term biodiversity was first coined by Walter Rosen in 1985. Students, this is an important question as the term biodiversity was coined by Walter Rosen. It comes in competitive questions like UGC. Now, we will see the Indian scenario of biodiversity conservation. Biodiversity is situated in India at the tri-junction of the Afrotropical, Indo-Malian and Palearctic realms. India is the largest biodiverse nation including 10 biogeographic zones. It is a mega diverse country. It includes 2.4% of world's land area but accommodates 7 to 8 percent species of flora and fauna that is almost double or triple. It includes 45,000 species of plants and 91,000 species of animals. Now what are biodiversity hotspots? I have explained it briefly in the previous module of biodiversity and environment conservation. I will just summarize it in this module. These are the biogeographic regions that contain significant reservoir of biodiversity and is under threat destruction. The main criteria for determining a hotspot are endemism, that is the species that are not present on the earth should be present on this hotspot area and should not be present nowhere else. And degree of threat, India has four biodiversity hotspot out of 34 or 35 identified globally. This data is according to the Conservation International 2013. These are, first is Himalaya. It comprises entire Indian Himalayan region and it falls in Pakistan, Tibet, Nepal, Bhutan, China and Myanmar. Second is Indo-Burma. It contains entire northeastern East India except for Assam and Andaman group of islands and Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia and southern China. Third are Sundalands. It includes Nicobar group of islands and Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, Philippines. Fourth is Western Ghats and Sri Lanka. It includes entire Western Ghats and Sri Lanka. International Union for the Conservation of Nature is a leading international organization that is working in the field of nature conservation and sustainable use of natural resources. This organization was established in 1948. It's a very, very important question and it evolved as a world's largest environment network and play key role to save biodiversity on global level. How many members are included in International Union for the Conservation of Nature? It includes over 1400 members both from governmental as well as from non-governmental organizations. The IUCN publishes IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. 
India became a state member of IUCN in 1969. This is again an important question that when India became a member of IUCN and that year was 1969. Where is the head office of IUCN India located? It is located in New Delhi and it was established in the year 2007. Next comes IUCN Red Data Book. IUCN Red List of Threatened Species, it was founded in 1964. It is the world's most comprehensive inventory of the global conservation status of biological species. As per the relative risk of extinction, the Red Data List contains seven categories. If this is again an important question from the competitive point of view that how many categories are included in the red data list. It includes only seven categories and we will discuss all these categories. Now these categories are first is extinct that is no known individuals are remaining. Second is extinct in the wild. They are known only to survive in the captivity or as a naturalized population outside its historic range. Third is critically endangered. These are extremely at high risk of extinction in the wild. Then comes endangered, high risk of extinction in the wild. Then comes vulnerable. These are having high risk of endangerment in the wild. Next comes threatened they will become endangered in the nearby future. Next category is LC that is least concern or lowest risk. It does not qualify for a more at risk category. Now what is marine biodiversity? India's coastal and marine areas should hold many biological treasures. Dense mangrove forest of Sundarbans, these are the world's largest congregations of nesting turtles in Odisha, beautiful seagrass beds in Park Bay, dolphins, dugongs in the Gulf of Manar, majestic whale sharks in the Gulf of Kutch. These are just a few examples of the treasures of India's coastal and marine biodiversity and these then students you should learn all these examples. The marine floral and faunal biodiversity of India is remarkable. It includes, now, it includes 200 species of diatoms, 90 species of dinoflagellates, 844 species of marine algae, 560 species of corals, 39 species of mangroves, and more than 10,000 species of invertebrates and 2,500 species of vertebrates. Now, next comes endemism species in India. In terms of endemism of vertebrate groups, groups, India's global ranking is 10th in birds with 69 species. It ranks 5th in reptiles with 156 species and it ranks 7th in amphibians with 110 species. Endemism is manifested most prominently in the Indian fauna among the amphibia including 61.2% of the amphibians and reptilia including 47% of the reptiles. Now, it it has been estimated that 62% of the known amphibian species they are endemic to India of which majority are found in the western ghats. The source is uh, already given. Now next comes endemism in plants is significant across different plant groups in India. India accommodates 47 families, 141 genera and about 4045 species of flowering plants, mainly angiosperms. These are distributed in the floristically rich areas of northeast India, western Ghats, northwest Himalayas and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now, Coming to the fish biodiversity or marine biodiversity, Geological Survey of India GZSI has recorded 3022 species and these species they constitute about 9.41% of the known fish species of the world. It means 9.41% of the species are alone present in India. National Bureau of Fish Genetic Resources NBFGR, the full form is important, is mandated to carry out research related to cataloging, characterization and conservation of countries' fish germplasm resources. 
Thus, Bureau has built up a database on around 2553, 2553 native fish species of India, generated information on population genetic structure of 23 prioritized endemic and commercially important species of fish. Now, critically endangered species in India. Critically endangered is the highest risk category. It has been assigned by International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources and comes under red list. There are five quantitative criteria to determine wild species whether a taxon is under threat or not. A taxon is critically endangered if it meets any of the following criteria. First criteria, if its population has declined or it will decrease by greater than 80% over the last decade or three generations. Second point is that it should have a restricted geographical range. Third is small population size and that population size should be less than 250 individuals and continue declining at 25% rate in the last three years or one generation, that is one decade very small or restricted population of fewer than 50 mature individuals and the last criteria that it should have high probability of extinction in the wild. According to IUCN list 2015, India included 988 species in red data book. It was 973 on 2014 and 659 species in 2008. Students, you can see that the number is increasing and increasing per year. In Indian scenario, the IUCN list 2015 classified mammals to critically endangered species. Critically endangered mammals, Himalayan brown red bear, pygmy hog, Andaman white shrew, Condena rat, large rock rat or alvira rat, Namdafa flying squirrel, Malawar civet, Sumatran rhinoceros, Kashmir hangul or stag. Next comes endangered marine many mammals which include freshwater or river dolphin, Gangs river dolphin, Indus river dolphin. Then comes endangered mammals including dhole or Asiatic wild dog or Indian wild dog and else deer, thamin or brown antler deer, golden langur, Himalayan or white valid musk deer, hispid hare, Assam rabbit, hog deer, lion tailed macaw, wanderu, cheetah, tibetan antelope, nilgiri langur, nilgiri leaf monkey, nilgiri tahar, red panda, wild ass or khur, agricultural crops and domesticated animal biodiversity. India is basically an uh, agricultural based country. It has 15 different agroclimatic zones. India is also considered to be a center of origin of rice. Students, it's a very important point that rice was originated in India. India also has a vast and rich repository of farm animals represented by a broad spectrum of native breeds of cattle that is 34 in number, buffaloes 12, goat 21, sheep 39 and chicken 15. To conserve India's rich domesticated biodiversity and promote crops and animal breeds, Ministry of Agriculture has set up six national bureaus write it or note it down. These six bureaus are plant genetic resources, animal genetic resources, fish genetic resources, agriculturally important insects, agriculturally important microorganisms and last is soil sciences. These bureaus, they serve as the nodal organizations for characterization, evaluating, cataloging and establishing national databases of living organism corresponding to their mandates. Apart from this, India is also preserved billion of diverse microbes. Out of these diverse microbes, many of them are found nowhere in the world. The country is also encompassed with enormous variability in agriculturally important microorganism and the source is India's fifth national report to the Convention on Biological Diversity by MOEF, Government of India. Now. Next comes biodiversity conservation in India. India has a very long tradition of setting areas for the conservation of wild flora and fauna. 
After independence, several protected areas they were designated in the form of national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. Protected areas are those areas where the human interference and the exploitation of natural resources is restricted or totally inhibited. These areas are characterized depending upon the level of protection and are governed by the laws of each country and these laws are different for each and every country or the regulations of the international organizations involved. Currently in the form of protected area, India forms a network of total 103 national parks covering 40,500.13 square kilometer and 54 centuries covering 1,18,931.18 square kilometer and 76 conservation reserves and 46 community reserves. Wetlands in India. India is bestowed with a rich diversity of wetlands that range from high altitude lakes of the Himalayas, flood plains and marshes of the Gangetic Brahmaputra alluvial plains, saline flats of green India desert to extensive mangroves marshes bordering to the country's east and west coastline. As per remote sensing imagery based assessment, India has total of 26 Ramsar wetland sites covering a total area of 12,119.03 square kilometer. Now different acts or government acts for biological diversity. These acts are very important. First was Biological Diversity Act 2002. This act came in 2002 and was born in India to resultant of India's attempt to achieve those objectives which were determined by United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity 1992 for the protection of their own biological resources. The act aims to conserve biological resources in a sustainable manner. For the purpose of implementing the objectives of this act, established the National Biodiversity Authority in Chennai on the year 2003. India successfully hosted the 11th meeting of the conference of the party COP11 to the Convention on Biological Diversity CBD that was held from 8 to 19, 19th October 2012 in Hyderabad. Other initiatives that were taken by the government include capacity building for industrial pollution management, Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Planning Authority, CAMPA. The full form of CAMPA is very, very important. Then comes NCSCM, National Center for Sustainable Coastal Management. Then Conservation of Natural Resources and Ecosystems Environment Information, Education Awareness, Environmental Management in Heritage, Pilgrimage and Tourist Centers, including the Protection of Taj, Social Forestry with communities that is Panchayat Ban Yojana. At last, I would like to conclude that India is a mega diverse country that is it is a country that is containing biodiversity and it is rich in biodiversity. It contains 7 to 8 percent species of flora and fauna. The current scenario, the current status is not good with respect to biodiversity conservation. Biodiversity is lifeline of any living system. Survival of human being will be threatened if the trend that is um, continued to loss of biodiversity. So this is our moral duty to conserve biodiversity as well as our environment. Long term maintenance of species and their management requires cooperative efforts across the entire world. Thank you.